Hey guys, I'm Abby Christensen and I read the book Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This book is about a nine-year-old girl named Fanny Price. Fanny Price was raised by a poor mother and she couldn't provide her with the life that she needed. She also grew up in a family of 10 children. So that's partially why they're poor is because they have so many children so they couldn't afford to raise them all. So the mother was desperate to send one of her children to have a better life. So she contacted her sister who married a very wealthy man named Sir Thomas Bertram. They originally wanted to send their oldest son, William, but for some reason the Bertrams didn't want the oldest son, but instead they wanted the oldest daughter and that's Fanny. So Fanny quickly made her adventure and went to live with the Bertrams at Mansfield Park. She was very shy and didn't like the idea of moving away from her family, which I mean, who can blame her? I wouldn't. And when she got to Mansfield Park, they thought, you know, she'll only cry for a night or two. But instead, on page 15, it says, a week had passed in this way and no suspicion of it conveyed by her quiet, passive manner when she was found one morning by her cousin Edmund, which is the love of her life, the future love. And she was constantly in tears, and Edmund was the only sibling who showed compassion towards her and comforted her and would eventually be her friend. And in the many years, you'll see that there are many love triangles in this series. And honestly, they keep you on your toes, and you're constantly wondering who will end up with who or what will happen next. And so that's when you'll see the story of Fanny Price. And she also kind of says, not necessarily just from her life, she also kind of gives a good perspective of other people's lives and the siblings in the family or her cousins. The next question is, who are the main characters in the book? The main characters are Fanny Price and Edmund Bertram. Fanny is a very shy girl who doesn't really give her opinion and is constantly agreeing with other people. She also never stands up for herself, especially when the other two sisters or cousins are constantly tearing her down and saying how she's worthless and not smart and how they are so much better than her. And Edmund, he is the only one who really truly shows compassion towards her and so he's very compassionate but he's kind of boring and he's not very fun. He's constantly telling his siblings and cousins oh no we shouldn't do this like this isn't good we should stick to doing our normal things or just sitting in the house and talking to each other and having dinner parties is basically all he wants to do but this one girl eventually comes in and kind of questions everything for him and that is Mary Crawford Mary Crawford is very independent and she never agrees with what society has to say and she always stands up for herself and her opinions. This is what Edmund likes about her. Edmund likes the idea that she never agrees and is constantly arguing with him and so it makes him think from a different perspective. Along with Marion Crawford came Henry. Crawford. Henry Crawford is quite the player. He has played many girls and he continues to play all the girls in the Bertram house. So first he plays Edmund's little sisters, Julia and Mariah Crawford. Julia and Mariah Bertram. Mariah is engaged to Mr. Rushworth and she only likes him for his money basically and so she was very content and she thought she was going to marry very well and that she would be just fine until Henry came and visited. She fell in love with Henry because Henry kind of gave her that love story that she never had. She was so, she was so just intrigued by him that she was very eager to do anything for him and be there for him and honestly not be there for her future husband. And she was also willing to backstab her little sister, Julia. Julia also thought that she was in love with Henry and she 
was constantly fighting with her sister and only really gave herself grief and was constantly sad about this because Mariah was the one who won. And that's only because Henry, he liked girls that were hard to get. And Mariah was obviously going to be the one that was harder to get because she was already spoken for. So, there are a lot of main characters in this book, but with a lot of main characters comes a lot of main love triangles, and it definitely keeps you interested. The next question is, what was your favorite incident in the book? My favorite incident has to be in chapter 17. When most people probably think that their favorite incident was when Fanny finally got paid attention to and she got a ball of her own and so she was kind of outed which means at the time that she was now announced to society as single and ready to get married and she kind of got what she wanted at the ball so she finally got her Cinderella moment but she didn't really get Edmund in the end so in chapter 17 the reason why I love this chapter is because it was so kind of hypocritical and everybody's very hypocritical in this chapter. Edmund, he totally disagrees with this play because the play is kind of a scandalous play and he's very moral and likes to stick to what's good and what's right. But because Mary's in the play and no one's playing her love interest, she was going to get a guy named Charles Maddox, which is in page 147. But Edward soon realizes that he's very jealous and he doesn't want any other men playing that role. And he only wants him to be a love interest of Mary. And so then he goes and tells his siblings and family members that, oh, this play is alright, so, and I can't let anybody else coming in to our theater club. And if I let anybody else in, Father won't be happy about that, so I better just play the role. Which is very hypocritical, because he was just harping on them and how bad this play was and how they should be ashamed of themselves and how their father was going to be so upset with them. And another person who's very hypocritical is Fanny. Fanny said that her heart was not only saddened by one amongst them as she began to acknowledge herself. Julia was a sufferer too, though not quite so blameless. So she was beginning to think about Julia and how Julia was constantly putting herself in a situation to be sad and to mope over Henry. And so at first Fanny felt kind of bad for her and she was like, oh, poor Julia, like she will never get him in the end and he's just playing her and her sister's backstabbing her and that's just not fair to her. But then Fanny kind of realizes that she puts herself in that own situation, so she begins to not really feel sorry for herself. But then Fanny goes back to feeling sorry for herself, and which is so hypocritical because Fanny is doing the exact same thing to herself. She's constantly doing whatever Edmund asks her to do and agreeing with everything he says when she shouldn't and she has different opinions and she should be stating those opinions to him and she's also constantly very envious of Mary and Mary does so many kind things she comforts her and she says compliments and she almost sticks up for her but Fanny never really appreciates it because you know Edmund's so head over heels for her and so I just find it very interesting because I feel like everybody can connect to that in their life when they see the wrongs that everybody else does and they're constantly thinking oh they're fine like they shouldn't be putting themselves in that situation but when it comes to like ourselves we're constantly feeling sorry for ourselves and we're making up excuses so I thought this chapter was very cool the next question is what do you like or dislike about the book Honestly, this book was very hard to get into it, and it was a very slow read. And these characters were kind of boring and almost kind of repetitive. And I didn't like how Fanny was very shy, and she wasn't a strong female lead, which I was kind of hoping she would. And I was, as I kept reading, and I got to page like 200, and I was like, when will she stand up for herself and finally 
tell Edmund her true opinions and realize that she's not worthless. But she really isn't. And I guess one thing I like about books is I like it when there's a strong, independent leader. And she was never really that. And another reason why I wasn't the biggest fan of this book was because it was written in a time period where they used more Middle English. So there was constantly like different spellings of different words and so you didn't know if this word meant something that I wouldn't realize it meant or if it was just a different spelling of a word. And some of the time it was really hard to figure out what the author was trying to say in her chapters because she would say something and it would mean a totally different thing. But I did like the love triangles and it was very interesting to find out that pretty much everybody loved everybody and eventually at one point or another had feelings for each other. And the last question is, who do I recommend this book to? I recommend this book to good readers who like a mixed up love story. This book, like I said, it's very hard to get into, so you have to be very patient with it and really stick to it. And it's kind of hard to understand, so unless you're a good reader, I don't recommend reading it. I would also recommend it to people who love a mixed up love story. There are so many twists and turns that you would have never realized, just like when Julia ran away with a character named Yates, Yates, I have no idea how to pronounce his name, but when he ran away with him, I would have never expected that from her. Or when Mariah cheated on Mr. Rushmore and with Henry Crawford, and so that ended up with a divorce. And I just, there's so many, I guess the endings is what I would have never expected, so if you like an inning that you wouldn't expect, and it has a very good inning of like a love story wise, like she ended up getting her Cinderella moment. So if you like that type of story, then I would definitely recommend it to you. And that's it. Thanks guys.